Shalom family, welcome to Vestals of Jesus Bible Hub where we the Bible students get to catch up on what we've learned and remind ourselves of all the lessons that we got during our Bible study sessions. So we're currently studying the book of Exodus in the ministry, hashtag the book of deliverance because it is mainly about the deliverance of Israel from Egypt and slavery. This is where we are introduced to a man named Moses that God chose in order for him to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Did you know that the name Moses literally means being drawn out because most he was found in the river and the daughter of Pharaoh drew him out of the water. Amazing, isn't it? We see Moses going back and forth with Pharaoh telling him that the Lord God of Israel says he should let the people go so they can serve him. And I'm sure this sounds familiar for most of us because during the fight for our deliverance, we need to keep going back and forth with the Pharaohs in our lives, demanding them to let us go so that we can go and serve the Lord with our mind, bodies, hearts, and soul. Amen. This is exactly why we need to study the book of Exodus because everything about deliverance is there. From confronting the enemy to being backed up by God and God showing his tremendous power to the end that we have our happy ending of being free from every slavery and bondage that the enemy may have us in. Amen. So for today, I'm just going to take you through all that we've learned so far because in the study, we are already through the first 13 chapters of the book. So I'm just going to summarize all that we've learned and hope that you join us today as we're going to have a Bible study session so that you don't miss out any further. Let's get into it. The Israelites had been in slavery for 400 years in Egypt when God heard their cry and decided it was finally time for his people to come out of Egypt. He remembered the covenant that he had with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So we learn and see that God does hear us when we lament because of our bondage and he desires to set us free. In addition to that, we are reminded that God is indeed a covenant-keeping God. Amen. So Egypt was a great nation at that time. I mean, no other nation was greater than it at that time. It is important to note that they worshipped water spirits from the Nile River. This means that they were backed up by marine powers and worshipped the marine kingdom. Now that already tells us that it wasn't going to be an easy fight for deliverance, considering what we know about marine spirits as taught by the ministry. They are vile, stubborn, and wicked spirits who are devoted to destroying the purposes of God, especially in believers. No wonder the Israelites were kept there to be slaves. The second thing to note is that throughout this fight for deliverance, what is happening between the Israelites and Egyptians is just a battle of powers. It's really a battle between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. We know this because for every physical battle, there is a spiritual one that backs it up in the spirit realm. So it was God versus Satan at that moment. We learn that the all-knowing God knew that Pharaoh would harden his heart and not let the Israelites go, which is why he decided to use the plagues to force Pharaoh to let the Israelites go. We also learn that God said he would harden Pharaoh's heart so that he can do his signs and wonders in Egypt. Does this mean God intentionally hardened Pharaoh's heart in order for his plans to come true? Well, we learn that it does not mean that God made Pharaoh's heart to be stubborn, but he only withdrew his mercy from him. What do we mean by mercy being withdrawn in this case? We mean that he left Pharaoh to his own devices for him to do what he wanted to do after Pharaoh refused to listen to God multiple times as God told him what God wanted. Romans chapter 1 and 9 <clears throat> explain this very well. Romans chapter 1 verse 28 helps us to see what happened to Pharaoh at this point. Since he did not see fit to acknowledge God or approve of him as he was saying to Moses, who is God that I should listen to him? God gave him over to a base and condemned mind. He became without understanding, conscienceless, faithless, heartless, loveless, and of all, merciless. So we learn that God withdrawing his mercy from Pharaoh meant that Pharaoh could not come back to his senses. He continued on with a hardened heart 
Hence, God says that I have hardened Pharaoh's heart. It means he had withdrawn his mercy in order for Pharaoh to not come back to his senses and obey God. And we see in Romans 9 verse 14 that the Bible says it wasn't injustice on God's part. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Indeed, every plague was meant to show how powerless Egypt's gods were compared to God's power because the first plague was the Nile River, the habitation of the marine spirits that Pharaoh was serving. It was turned into blood. This was to mock the marine kingdom that Pharaoh was serving to show him that actually the gods that you serve are nothing. I can even ruin their reputation for free. For the second plague, God used frogs. Ever wondered why God would use frogs out of all the animals that he could have used to plague Egypt? Well, we learned in Bible Hub that the reason was because one of the gods being worshipped in Egypt was the god of fertility who appeared as a frog, as you can see there. So frogs were held sacred in Egypt. Hence, God used them to torture them and annoy them to show that the gods that you are worshipping are nothing compared to me, the true living God. This includes the third plague, which was lies. They also represented the gods that were worshipped in Egypt, including the flies, which was used for the fourth plague. All these animals were considered sacred as they represented their gods. Hence, they were being used to destroy them and their well-being. It was all part of mocking um, the gods that were worshipped in Egypt. The next four plagues were aimed at the prosperity and livelihood of Egypt, which was believed to come from the marine spirits. God attacked the livestock, the Egyptians' health with the boils, their agriculture with the hailstorm mixed with fire, as well as the swarm of locusts to finish off the job of destroying their agriculture, which was the main source of food. One of the key things that we also learned was that the demons tormenting our lives will not give up easily, which brings us to the deliverance principles that we have learned so far, which is faith, obedience, and persistence. Meaning that in our fight for deliverance, we should keep on being persistent, just like Moses was in going back and forth and not quitting. The faith in God. And finally, we learn from Moses the key deliverance principle of obedience in obeying God in all that he tells us to do as we are fighting for our deliverance.